actually. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, then let's start. Okay. A very good afternoon to all of you. So the title of my talk is 3D Bioprinting for Medical Application. So uh, as far as I understand, understand this, uh, probably the audience is from different backgrounds. So I'll, what I'll do, I'll have some general slides like from the very basic about 3D bioprinting, then I'll show you about some of our research works. Okay, so this is the outline of this today's talk. So I'll be introducing 3D, this 3D bioprinting technologies, then what are the different classification of this technologies like the best upon the application, definitely the best upon the applications, also based upon the operations of principles. And then I will talk about different tissue printing, how we can print complex tissue, taking examples from how my RDA research works, and also about the in vitro tissue models. That is the current research trend is in this way. Like currently there are many researchers or many groups working on this uh, developing of in vitro tissue models. Then the ultimate questions like everyone probably will be having that. And I will try to answer that with help with the help of some literatures. Okay, so the first uh, thing, what is 3D bioprinting? And this is also known as tissue or organ printing. Probably many of these, uh, many places, probably if you see, they then the, they report it like tissue printing or organ printing, okay. So this is nothing but the 3D bioprinting and this is an extension of the 3D printing technology or additive manufacturing technology that many of you must be aware of that uses a layer by layer manufacturing concept, like where we print the whole structure in a layer by layer fashion but uh, the only difference in 3D of 3D bioprinting with other 3D printing technology, the materials of the materials is very different here. Actually, when you are talking about tissues and organs, then you know that the main building block of these tissues and organs are the cells, cells plus matrix materials, and then then there are various other things. Okay, so basically, so when you are going for printing tissues, then definitely we cannot do that without cells. Okay, so that's why the raw material or the printable material in this case is cells encapsulated either in buffer or in some, in some cases, it can be encapsulated in materials like polymer, like hydrogels, polymer solutions, but mostly it is aqueous, aqueous gel. And the fun, ultimately the purpose is to make artificial tissues and organs. Okay, so now there are the, the various steps to this process. Uh, as a, again, I'm taking the analogy of other 3D printing technology. So there are also like in other 3D printing, it is a pre-processing there we develop the CAD models and the CAD models. So they basically that is the STL file or that is the virtual blueprint for printing that particular tissue. So that's what, but when you are trying to print a uh, human tissues like liver, kidney, or even it's a, some, a part of tissue, then we don't, generally we don't start with the STL, the CAD modeling. Okay, we start with the, the, we take help from different bioimaging techniques, okay, like CT, MRI, we get the data, that is the 3D geometry we can get from this, uh, from this uh, CT or MRI, that is the, the but, and those, those are available in DICOM format, okay. So now for printing, ex ex we can, we can replicate or we can react exactly create the similar structure by 3D bioprinting technique. But what we need to do, what's the DICOM, what are the, what about the DICOM images that we obtain from this bioimaging techniques that we need to convert into STL file so that the machine or the 3D bioprinter, they understand this, they understand this technique. See, they understand this, this uh, the data in that particular format. Okay, so whenever, now, whenever we got this data, we convert it into STL file, then we load it there into, just a minute, I'll switch on my laser pointer, yes. So then whatever the, by this CT or MRI, whatever the data, we can convert them into STL, then that is, that can be loaded to the 3D bioprinter. Now this 3D bioprinter, like other 3D printers, okay, so they have certain software, inbuilt software to that. So they will, again, slice the object into various, in the horizontal slice, the horizontal order. So that we can have various horizontal slices. So each slice will be taken at a time and that will be printed and as a layer. Okay, so at a time we can print different layers. We can print one layer, and then the subsequently we will be printing different other slices as a la different layers. Okay, so by this way, the process will be repeating. Then we can get the whole structure. 
But in this case, before even actually for going for bioprinting, we need to prepare the hydro, you need to prepare a bioink. That is the bioprintable material. So here, the bioink bio may contain hydrogel cells, biomolecules, growth factors, or whatever the other things necessary for survival and function of the cells. We need to provide everything to get everything within the bioink. Also, we can sometimes we can use some scaffolding material for to make the template so that the hydrogel can be placed within the template for to get the whole structure. Now at this stage, whatever we have prepared or whatever we have printed, we don't call them tissues directly, but because they are not matured, they need further match, they need further maturation so that the function can be developed further so that that can act as a whole tissue. So at this stage, we call them pre-tissue. So upon maturation, that can be, they can mature to a tissue and then that can be used for uh, implantation purpose or for it can also be used for different uh, various other purpose I will come to that so there are basically there are three steps here pre-processing that is before actually before printing what are the different steps what are the different process we are do for making the things ready so that that is that comes under the pre-processing then process in processing they are actually preparation of bioink even the actual printing those things comes under the processing and then after student after printing the things that you do for further maturation of this tissue or in certain case we need to simulate that like uh, maybe we need to give some mechanical loading some kind of thing so for further maturation those things also can be done at post processing thing so 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 that's the thing whole process about bioprinting now i have a video here i have taken from some other websites so in youtube also these videos are available you can see there are many such videos so in this video actually you can be able to see how this process of bioprinting is actually done basically first thing these are the syringes that can be attached to a bioprinted bioprinting head, bioprinted head. So here you will be loading your all the different bioings. So those are required. So at a time, so depending upon the printer's capability or depending on the printer's uh, specification, you can have either one syringe, one syringe or you can have multiple syringes. Okay. So but and if, if you have multiple syringes, then you can load different types of uh, cells at different nozzles at different syringes. So and but and you know that for printing tissues because tissues in many uh, the tissues they are not composed on a single cell it is a multiple cell they are arranged in a particular order there is a hierarchy there are different other cells different other materials arranged in a particular order so actually you need to reproduce or recreate all this different hierarchy or order when to buy printing so that's what so in this video what they are showing first they are showing suppose the one kind of cells is getting printed so that is being patterned on a particular order so this is here they are maintaining a spherical pattern so you can whatever the gel but what can whatever the tissue means you need to look how the cells are arranged in a particular tissue that accordingly you can design them and you can load you can print them as per the order so here they have orders they have uh, printing the tissue in a spherical pattern now probably then again by the another and two different types of cells suppose they have printed green and red one and then suppose in between they are putting some hydrogel that can be used and that can be taken later out later on, or that can use for them some just as by as a matrix material or supporting material Similarly, this process then that this process is keep on repeating. The process kept repeating itself to get the height so that after, after this thing we can achieve a three-dimensional structure. Now, soon after the printing is done, then we need to take care of that part by providing necessary all the other necessary conditions. So this is the way how the whole structure can be printed. Then after printing, you need to provide media and other things that you gen basically gen that you generally do for cell culture purpose. So all these conditions so the cell the tissue can survive, they can they can mature further. Okay. So coming to the different approaches, by printing this by printing is not a single technology. Okay, so like other th same similar to other three printing technologies, it differs from uh, based upon the materials being used, based upon the principle of operation, and also based upon the capabilities. So here, basically, at least three different types we can classify them based at least three different types. So they are like inkjet based bioprinting, micro extrusion based bioprinting, and also laser assisted bioprinting. So the inkjet based bioprinting is very similar to our office printer. Basically, many of you. You have or seen a office a office printer that works on inkjet principle. Okay, so inkjet printing it is nothing but when the ink whatever the ink ink here is the cell suspension or cell suspended in a very uh, low viscous buffer or media even media can also be used. 
okay so now the main purpose of inkjet printing is we, by inkjet printing we can create droplets and those droplets can be can range from anywhere between nanoliter to microliter size so and they can contain cells within that so basically we can contain cellular cell containing drops and those drops can be patterned at, on the stage at different ways okay like you can pre create different kind of architecture whatever your ultimate final aim is so you can create this kind the drops can be put in this thing now and uh, the very first attempt of doing this inkjet bioprinting was done by uh, Thomas Boland when he he modified a HP office printer, inkjet printer, to print cells. Okay, but if, in your office printer, probably there is a tray where the paper is being placed. But for bioprinting, what we do, we replace that tray with a stage where we can keep either plate, cell culture plate, or say well well plate, or even when even a glass plate so depending upon the depending upon your final aim you can put whatever is means whatever the your the stage stage can be varied now one thing you may should be you should remember this then with when we are going we are printing the 3d structure with it with the water droplets we cannot print a 3d structure right yes somebody raised a hand so do you have any questions are we taking questions in between or we take it at the end? Uh, no, no, we will take questions at the end. Let them raise a hand, they will ask questions later. Okay, fine, that's okay. Okay, so now, if you can uh, miss, by only creating this water droplets, we cannot make a 3D structure, you know that. Means we cannot put one droplet over, over another droplet, okay? Because what will happen, the droplets will slide. And then they, they we cannot get the structure so what do we do basically basically we need a, another some support structure so in this case what you, we need some kind of bio paper and those bio paper basically those are placed something like this so like these are suppose these are the cell droplets so those are those can be create patterns can be created on on the piece of a paper bio paper so that bio paper can be made up of collagen or any other material then any other biodegradable basically any other biodegradable material materials and then we can pattern them as per our own requirement and then the, when the first layer is done then the second layer second by, by second layer of bipolar will be put on top of that and then the same thing again same process will be keep on repeating after some times up means up to up to a desired height okay now when, when we have done this then we will be culturing this the whole construct will be culturing under in under co2 incubator it's like all the necessary, whatever the general conditions, like the other CO2 incubator, we need to provide media, we need to plan all these things. And then, but this bio paper that is degraded, as it is degradable, what will happen? It will degrade by it, it will degrade by its own upon time. And the cells that we have printed in the in, time, in the form of droplets, but the cells have they, these cells are fluidic in nature, you know that. The cells are fluidic in nature so that they can sense if there is a presence of other cells around in the surrounding what they will do they will self-assemble and they will merge with each other and then the whole all the droplets they will just merge into a whole structure and they will also produce extracellular matrix these cells the embedded cells they will produce extracellular matrix by this way we can get the whole structure structure okay now coming to the next technology that is laser assisted bioprinting this is little this is very different from inkjet printing here what we have we have with the help of laser our interest is to print that structure but here also we generate droplets but these droplets are being generated by different principles than the inkjet printing inkjet printing the droplets are being generated by either by thermal induced or by piezoelectric piezo crystals okay by means either it can be thermal induced or it can be piezo induced by inkjet bioprinting. But in case of laser assisted bioprinting, what we have, we have a ribbon kind of structure. And the constituent of this ribbon is the top surface of the ribbon is composed of glass because it can, the laser laser or light can pass through the glass. And then the next layer, very, the very next layer of this glass is the gold or energy, this, that call also called energy observing layer. And gold is a very good example of that energy observing layer. And then below that, we have a single coat of bioink and here the viscosity of the bioink play a major role because because this bioink should not drip by itself so suppose we coated a material if the material is low very low viscous that will start dripping so the the droplets will start forming by its own all the whole bioink will come down so that's not required so we need some kind of paste like viscosity so that we can coat this surface 
and then whenever we are striking a laser means whenever we are shining laser on the surface the laser can pass through the glass and it is hitting the gold now the gold if the laser hitting the gold the gold will get heated up because it is absorbing the energy so it will get heated up now you know you very well notice that whenever suppose you try to boil water in a in a pan the very first thing you notice that even the boil is water even the water starts boiling the very first thing that you notice is the bubble formation the same thing will happen here because this is a the hydrogen this is a, some hydrogen the our aqueous base aqueous gel so whenever the the gold is heating up there will be a bubble formation and due to the bubble the the diving that is be that is present below that bubble bubble or the increasing bubble it will get dislodged and then you can that is that will be actually accumulated in the collecting slide so there is not much gap between this donor slide and the collecting slide so this is the 3d view of this thing i have a video of this same process this is also taken from youtube you can see these all these videos there are in number of videos available so you see all the now you can see the light this is the photon that is striking there is a mirror that is striking the miss or deflecting the photon towards this this is a lens for further focusing then the ribbon and whenever the the by the, the photon is striking the ribbon the it is the gold is heated up and then the piping this that is the drop is being formed and that is getting deposited on the collecting plate so now based upon your the light movement of the light you can create different kind of pattern okay whatever is your design based upon that you can create different pattern so that is about about laser assisted bioprinting or lab it is also called light induced forward transfer because with the help of light we are transferring the material from the donor plate to collector plate that's why it is also called light induced forward transfer then the next printing technology is extrusion based fiber printing and this is a very popular one because this is not here we don't need a very soft very sophisticated uh, system but even nowadays the fdm 3d printer that is the that is used for printing thermal plastic that is being modified to print use as a extrusion based fiber printer here it works on the principle of like yeah, we have a syringe that is that is being attached to the xy movement controller that's our xy movement head and then this syringe within the syringe we can load any type of material either means in the form of gel or hydrogel gel solution and all this okay so low any low viscous to high viscous material you can load in this thing even the cells can also be loaded within a proper appropriate buffer or some material hydrogel material then if we now push that material by pneumatic means by that means by compressed air or by piston or by screw by any means if we can push that then the material will come down now depending on the viscosity of the material either we can get a droplet or we can get a strand we can get a line so that to depend upon the depending on the viscosity of the material so this is the actual principle of this extrusion based bio printing and here it shows more some more about this thing we have a syringe we are pushing the material by some pneumatic pressure or by piston it can in this the material can contain cells within the, within some bio materials and then we can push the material or extrude the material through this needle and then that can be plotted on a plate so this can be anything like anything your printing plate it can be a cell culture plate it can be a, it can be a well plate or any any uh, glass slides or anything and then based upon your design based the this printed will move now the printed can move in xyz xy direction or even xyz 3d this 3d direction is possible and many other printed the stage can move in z direction so anything can be possible this is actual image of our, of the 3d printer 3d bio printer where the you can see this is the syringe and then the material is loaded and that is it is connected to some new to the pneumatic pressure and then it is being printed so this is a video taken from one one literature or one research paper where it is clearly seeing how the 3d based 3d bio printing process is done okay and here they have used different dies for printing at different layers okay and you see that the and when we are printing we give some gaps in between this i will come to i will tell you why we are giving a gap while we are printing now the cells and other things can be loaded in this thing within this at line and so that we can get a cell and whole structure now the gaps are given because when the, we are printing cells within the structure the cells need nutrition oxygen and in it whatever the waste material that is being accumulated that needs to clear out okay so that's why if we create a this kind of porous structure then the media can perfuse through this pores and the Uh, so the lines present whenever it is the lines are present so there those can be 
that lines can be missed the media media can perfuse or media can diffuse through the lines so the cells present at different locations they can get nutrition and oxygen now again we work on in our lab we work on extrusion based dye printing technologies so depending upon again the the way we do this extrusion based dye printing or depending on the process this can again be different uh, miss can be classified into three types like either we can print with cellular only cellular and hydrogel that is when the cells are embedded within the material or within the hydrogel then that and again we need to provide all the conditions other conditions like the media is the nutrition and oxygen right so that's why we also add media to this hydrogel and then we we'll load cells and also we need to maintain the osmotic pressure so otherwise the cells can get burst or can squeeze so depending upon the osmotic pressure so that's why we need it needs to be have osmo osmo yeah, similar osmotic pressure and then then that cellular and hydrogen we can print into a structure like here it is print it is being printed as a crisscross crisscross pattern okay and then then that can be cultured so here this is a live dead image of the same structure one of one cross so you can see here all the green dots those are the live cells and that some there are some gray red dots those are the dead cells present within the structure this is about the scale is almost like 7 mm so this structure is almost like 8 uh, 8 to 8 or 10 mm in size the length and breadth and height is almost like 4 mm so this is one of our earlier studies and also now like, sometimes you know that when you are dealing with say a hydrogel the hydrogel is actually the viscosity of the hydrogel cannot be very high there are some other concerns like the cell can get damaged if it is very stiff so the viscosity should be moderate and you know that whenever the hydrogel moderate concentration of hydrogel it is very difficult to print into a structure because the viscosity is as such that it can flow and we need to have some kind of cross linking mechanism to to arrest the flow otherwise the we cannot get a very good structure so there is other strategy where what we do where we combine some thermoplastic polymers or fdm based printing technology to print the structure where what it does basically the thermoplastic polymers are used to create the template the lines and it, and we have gaps in between the line and so that the hydrogel can be loaded or hydrogel can be printed within the gaps of this line so that then we can get the whole three structure we can print them so that we need not to be bo bothered about the viscosity of the hydrogel in this case we can print even lower viscous hydrogel can also be printed and cells can be loaded within this print within the hydrogel you see here here the different dyes are used to show you different like the green 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 here are the chondrocytes and the red ones are the osteoblast osteoblast those are loaded inside the inside the different hydrogels and that those are being printed just to show you the uh, the possibility of this diff different kinds of printing different cells at different locations of the structure so this technology is also like combinations with thermoplastic polymer this also called hybrid bio printing technologies now in certain cases because our tissue and our tissues and organs are so complex in nature the in shapes so we cannot print them just by simply by, by one single material what is it because they are the shapes are very different suppose if you are trying to print this layer then it has a very complex shape and in certain case the that we have hanging geometry suppose if you print this here by either by this orientation or by any reverse orientation in both way we will have some hanging geometry and in 3d printing we need to we cannot print the hanging geometry as such we need to provide a support to this one so that's why along with some supportive material we can print this structure so that and later on this supporting materials are as a that will act as a sacrificial material so that we can take that away and then we can get the actual structure so that can be also along with sacrificial material is another concept of extrusive bio printing now coming to coming to the most important ingredient of bio printing that is the bio ink because this is the printable material that we can, that we are going to use that we use to print the structure so that's what we do now where about our okay so whenever we have this uh, like this cellular hydrogel those are the bio ink and then as i told you this is the most vital ingredient of the bio ink because this is this only provide the nature yeah, necessary conditions or the suitable ambience to the cells so the cells will survive and they will function accordingly and so that they will not die during this bio printing process so that's why the um, preparation of bio ink is a major job for bio printing okay now there are many such uh, key hydrogel properties like the for where we for biological point of view the biocompatibility and biofunctionality is one major point one major or major 
properties of the bioing that you need to take care of. And from the geological point of view, like the surface of viscosity is another major point, major uh, properties, hydrogen properties, property that we need to take care of because we cannot print very fine, we cannot print a very uh, fine, uh, very low viscous material, or we cannot print a very high viscous material in this case. And the physical view, it should have some proper yield stress so that the, when we're printing the structure, if the soon after printing, the material should not flow away, or it should not spread because we need a perfect light. So uh, the yield stress of the material will, will uh, uh, actually provide that. And then we, we need to have some kind of cyclic mechanism because by printing one, the extrusion based by printing one major important consideration is while the, while you are doing bio printing, that time the material should be in solution condition. But as soon as we printed the structure, there it should be gel so that the, we can arrest the flow. Okay. Now, so for that we need to have some gelation mechanism that can be there can be various types of gelation mechanism, either thermal, ionic, and other things. So that so there are many things. I am not going to details of this thing due to the time limitation. But but whatever gelation mechanism you are using, those should be cytocompatible nature. Otherwise, that work that the, the printing will not work. So these are the some of the important requirements for selecting bio ink. And whenever you are choosing a bio ink for a particular application, you need to see this, see this, see this, track, see this thing. Like the biocompatibility, bioprintability of the material, biocompatibility whether the material is biocompatible with the cells or not, whether we have some cytochromatic gelation mechanism or not, viscoelasticity is another factor because all our tissue is mostly viscoelastic in nature. So that's why we need to have certain that hydrogel that should have some viscoelastic nature. And that tissue, that hydrogel, whatever we are selecting, they should, or uh, this hydrogel should have tissue regeneration properties. Like they should support tissue regeneration. Otherwise, the whole uh, this will not work. And the material is up, it should be of close biodegradation because there should there should not be present longer for longer duration within the body when you are implanting them. And then the material should be permeable to oxygen nutrients. Other the cells will die because they will not get nutrition. And then shear thinning of the material is another property where. Uh, when the shear rate is increasing, the viscosity of the material is going down. That helps in better bioprinting because then the shear induced damage will be less in this case. So these are the ideal properties of the bioing that we should take care of. Now there are different examples. If you see in the in the in the literatures, if you see, you can find different types of materials people have used, starting from anything like whatever the different biomaterials or hydrogels. At least we have people have tried to researchers have tried to print all of these. Okay, starting from alginate, gelatin, chitosan, hyaluronic acid, uh, uh, then collagen, all these things. So mostly they are they are of exogenous source, like they are exogenous polymer. The, of course, collagen, hyaluronic acid, these are uh, these are from human origin, and the others are mostly from other origin, like alginate, chitosan, and other things. Now the purpose of bioprinting, why you actually we are interested in bioprinting, there are mostly you can do many things with bioprinting, but these are these are the three type three things mainly you can do, like the the bioprinting major application of bioprinting is in tissue engineering. Like we can develop various types of tissues, bioprint like bioprinted skin, cartilage, vasculature, liver, more, everything we can mess with. All these those things are then the research. So we are, there are many more. Most nowadays, mostly if you see, researchers must have targeted all of the different tissues and body that we have. Okay, different types of tissues and body uh, organs they have at least they have tried. The other thing that we can do, these tissue, bioprinted tissues or organs that can also well used for, that can be used for as a models for human physiology or pathology, so that uh, we can use them for understanding the developmental biology in vitro, other they can also be used for in vitro disease as an in vitro disease model. We can also understand how the cancer progresses, how the cancer metastasis, so that they like for 3D, 3D cancer modeling also, this can well be used. And there are many, many reports about this, all these different applications. And other things that they can also be used as in vitro diagnosis, like human on chip, liver on chip, lung on chip. So these are the, there are, these are the other major research dimensions, these are research categories where the bioprinting can also come into, come handy. And, and there are, there, here also in this case also there are a number of examples and you can see just I would like to discuss one thing about the tissue printing like for the tissue regeneration that we have done we have done in my earlier from my earlier studies so this is the work where we have what we have used we have used uh, like if you see uh, mostly people have used different polymers like alginate gelatin all these different polymers they have used for bioprinting but there these are mostly single polymer on certain cases there may be a one or two mixture of polyp or polymer blend. But in this work, what we have done, 
we have taken digitalized extracellular matrix because there is a history of using digitalized extracellular matrix for different other applications. Like there are many FDA approved products available based upon this digitalized extracellular matrix. This is nothing but if we have, we are collecting the tissues. Here, in this case, we have collected tissues from three different origins, and then then we can uh, digitalize them. Digitalize is nothing but when we can throw out all the cells from the material so that that is the only the cellular matrix or the extracellular matrix that is big, that is used that is present so that we can we have developed a method to make a hydrogel out of this extracellular matrix and that had within the hydrogel then we have loaded cells also and that can be printed as i earlier told you by this hybrid bioprinting concept where we have printed the this template with pcl and then the dcm hydrogel containing cells that we have printed in between the gaps of these lines then we can by this Again, repeating the process, we can get the 3D structure. Now, then we allow them to gel, and then that can be used for different applications. Either it can go for tissue engineering, or it can also be used as an in vitro model for drug screening, or as an in vitro disease model, or can cancer for cancer modeling. Also, this can be used. So, this is some more detail about this thing. These are the tissues, like the tissue. You can see that these are the native tissues, and then the digitalized tissue, and there's the some same morphology, same morphology, and also some histological sections. You can see here how. Because after before printing the cell, the, the tissue they have cells. Okay, but after digitalization, our idea is our interest is to remove or the target is to remove the whole cells completely. So that's what you see after the after digitalization, you cannot see the cells here. The structure is also lost, and the only the the cellular matrix or the extracellular matrix that is being present. Then we have done various other characterization like the to finding a find out whether the this tissue, what is the percentage of uh, retaining of extracellular matrix and what is the percentage of removal of uh, cells? Okay, cells in, we have quantified in terms of DNA. So DNA quantification gives you a better idea about the percentage of cell removal or remaining. Like in this case, our idea is to remove maximum cells. So we can see that at least less than three percent of DNA is residual DNA present within the tissue. So that is well beyond, well within the range uh, that is acceptable limit. And the and we have seen that. Like the, our process, it has it is uh, it does very less removal of collagen and gag. So gag is almost is, is of course gag is somewhat removed, but the collagen is retained within the within the our hydro within the hydrogel DCM hydrogel. Now this DCM hydrogel it has a beautiful property. Like it behaves like a temperature sensitive material. If you see here at 15 degrees centigrade these materials are flowing, but if you keep them at 37 degrees centigrade they will become gel because it has the DCM is mostly composed of collagen and it is a collagen chemistry that is playing here, right? And that similar thing we have also done by or characterized by rheological, real uh, rheological uh, characterization we have done. And here you see this is the typical shear thinning curve of this DCM because the with increasing shear rate the viscosity is going down and it helps in printing. I will come to that. And also gelatin. This is the gelatin kinetics of this material. You see here at 40 degrees centigrade that like the modulus is much lower here, and almost like now when the when the temperature reaches 37 degrees centigrade, the viscous the modulus of the material also it is increasing many fold than this at what at that end then the whatever it had at 40 degrees centigrade. So the that's what we come to know that the the viscous the, the this material is a it has a thermosensitive gelatin properties. Okay, so with increasing temperature, this material will become gel. So that's what we see in here also. And then this is the other other illogical properties. So this is actually the how we have done this tissue printing. So this we have used various types of digitalized extracellular matrix gel, and along with some uh, some uh, thermoplastic polymers to print the whole structure. You see, this is the morphology of the structure. Then the this is the video from our our printing. Actually, first we have printed the PCL framework. This is the pre-cell framework that we have printed. So this process is repeated three times to get the height. And then this is the DCM hydrogel that we have along with cells that is, that is we have printed. We are calling it pre-gel because it is not yet gel. It is in solution state. We, now the temperature of the stage, not stage is at kept at 37 degrees centigrade and the printed is kept at 15 degrees centigrade so that it, allow, it should allow the material to flow. And 37 degrees, if we keep the stage at 37 degrees, it will become gel. So this is the whole printed structure. And this is the very last layer of this uh, DCM printing. You see the DCM is printed every alternate layers, every alternate gaps between the template. So this is about the video. Now, uh, yeah, the morphology of the structure here, 
when it is only printed with cell laden hydrogel. So this is the HDCM gel within that when I printed the cells. You see here, here the cells are visible, quite visible within this structure. And this is the same micrographs of the structure, printed structure. You see, this is the hydrogel and this is the PCL framework. And this is the image of this light microscopy. The, this black line as the PCL and this is the hydrogel. And this round round things present within the cell, those are the cells that is sub suspended within this hydrogel. Depending. Another important consideration is whether the whole structure, if we culture them for 14 days, whether the cells will be or the hydrogel will be present there or they can get washed away. So we have seen till 14 days, they all this, this, these green dots are the live cells that is present within the structure. You see, and the green dots are almost it is present everywhere within the structure and they are very much visible. So that's why that at least till days 14, cells are viable within the structure and the, the hydrogel also present within the structure. And this is the long-term stability structure till 14 days they are stable. One important consideration here, whether the, because when you are pushing the cells plus material through this, through a very fine nozzle, there can be a shear stress generated. Whether the shear stress, they are damaging the cells or not. Meaning they are either they are into inducing apoptosis or maybe they are maybe inducing damage. So we need to check with both the things. So in this case, tunnelis is a beautiful asset to find out the apoptotic cells. So we have just compared with the non-printed things, printed and non-printed, you see there is not much difference. So the our printing process that is not causing any cell damage and that is very good for printing the cells. Then the next thing is cell viability. You see all the green things, those are the green dots, those are the live cells. And also we have seen, so, so the cell viability is very good and that is maintained in 14 days. Also the cell to cell connection that is re-established. So the cells can connect with each other three dimensionally. That is very healthy sign because in our tissue that is in our native tissue that happens, the cellular interaction and cell matrix is a very important factor. And that's what we have seen in our structure. And then we are also characterized by different other ways like by whether the tissue, what we have printed, they are expressing that particular tissue specific genes or not. Like in this case, we have used some of the markers and then we seen we have seen that they are, they are expressing those proteins in the tissue specific manner. Also, the next step is whether the gene they have suppose the genes they have expressed certain types of genes. Now, whether they have also expressed proteins, so the protein production is done, they happened or not. So that's also we need to check. And then we have checked this by using immunohistochemistry or immunohistochemistry. And we have seen that we have used different markers, tissue specific markers, and we could see that the cell these tissues they have produced that particular tissue specific proteins so that so this this is very encouraging now we have also done in vivo study but i'm not going to the details of those things i i would like to show a few more things like this 3d vibrant how suppose you have a complex structure suppose the year structure that i have given earlier example you want to print that so what is the way you can print that you see the now first the very first thing we need to start with ct scan data so that we can get the, get the exact shape size volume of this the year whole year Okay, so that is the CAD model. And then we can generate the virtual blueprint that is the slices and layers. And then that is can be loaded into the printer and that we have printed. Now, how we can print a overhanging geometry? The, the, there, the sacrificial material comes, uh, the concept of sacrificial material comes into play. Like we can print the sacrificial material along with the structural material in every layer. We can repeat the same thing. So whenever we have a hanging geometry, we need to print a the sacrificial material, like something like this. Suppose we need our final structure is something like this pyramid. Okay, reverse pyramid. Okay, now this part are hanging. Okay, so we need to provide support to this. Otherwise, what happens during printing? This can fall away. Whole thing can fall away. So what we will do? We'll build up the sacrificial material in a certain way so that it can support the our final structure. And then finally, what will happen? This sacrificial material can be removed either by simple washing. Or, or various other ways. So that can be removed. That's why the sacrificial material should be water soluble. In, for bioprinting at least, we need a sacrificial material, material that is water soluble. Then we can wash them and then we can get the final structure. So this is the final, ultimately final printed final structure of this carry of this uh, year model. And there we have considered two zones either because our year is composed of mostly cartilage and then the, there's the, this fat, there's the ear lobe that is made up of fat, fat tissue. Okay, so that's what we have done here. We have printed cartilage tissue. Here we have printed fat tissue. And you can see there's some de detailed, uh, detailed um, images of this year model. Then the very next thing I'm, uh, I would like to discuss is the bioprinted in vitro models. 
Now, why in vitro models are important? If you see here, this is the drug discovery. This is the whole process of our scheme of drug discovery. It is missed first the very miss, many lead molecules are being identified, then they are being tested on 2D models, then few active lead molecules are maybe obtained, or then they are becoming then those are being screened for toxicity in smaller molecule and also for efficacy in the smaller animal model, then in the higher molecule animal model, then in human. Means the very there's the first clinical trial where it is done on some healthy volunteers. Then it can be used for the patients for the population or or patients. Now, but the health process is like it is very lengthy and there is a huge money involved. Okay, so it is low feasible and there are ethical concerns now. This because of this testing on animals and also time consuming. So this is the EU, EU guidelines. Okay, so they actually test banned on all the animal tested for products. And they also, they have, there's a clear guidelines. Now many countries, they are also going and they are following the similar path, okay? So we need to have in vitro human-based model so that we can test. Suppose if we have a human model, so what we can do, we can the, replace the whole thing with this human-based model so that the time can be saved. And also the money can be, we can save huge money on this, based on this. So that's why many such industries now, they are going towards this developing in vitro models and they're, Actually, they are collaborating with many such bioprinting companies like uh, Organobi is one such company in the US and there's many, many other things. So they're, they're actively working on this thing. So we are also interested in these in vitro models. In our lab, we are working on at least two, three different types of model development. So, and these are the advantages of this in vitro models. Those things can be missed, we can tackle this. So we are interested in liver models. We are trying to recreate this kind of morphology like this liver sinusoidal morphology. If you know that in our liver, the liver cells are they are arranged in a particular order so that we have some, some something called a, as a sinusoid. These are the capillary that is present in between the lines of these hepatocytes, that is the sinusoids, and there is a central vein and the portal vein. From the portal vein that is carrying blood from the liver, sorry, blood carrying from the intestine that is coming to the liver, and it is being then it is mixed with the portal artery, and then the blood is passing through the sinusoid and going to the central vein. And then it is going to the going back to the heart, and then is going to the other areas of the body. Now, the, why this is an important fact? Because liver sinusoid is a very important function unit of the liver. Here, what it happened? The cells present near the portal triad and cells present at the vein, vein, central vein. They got or they get different concentration of oxygen because the blood is flowing through due to the blood flowing through these channels. The, the cells sitting here, they are getting highly concentrated. Miss oxygenated, highly oxygenated blood, but here cells are getting less oxygenated blood. And due to this difference, uh, getting different types of oxygen, different concentration of oxygen, they express they express different types of protein, and accordingly, different types of zones are being established here, developed in the liver. So there are at least three zones: zone one, two, and three. And accordingly, they express different proteins. Their functions they express different cyto cytochrome P450 enzymes, and their functions are also very different. And, all, and different drugs, they have different types of toxicity to different zones. So that's what we try to do. So this we try. This is a very fast fast attempt to print this this spheroidal or sorry hexagonal liver structure. And we have seen that whenever we are printing the cells in a in a co-culture, means that is the, we are printing with the hip the hip jute we have used, and we are printing with the Hubeck endothelial cells, then the cells are expressing good number of HNF alpha antibody. That means the cells are healthy, the hepatocytes, the cells are healthy, and they're expressing hepatocyte specific marker here, markers. But in, in monoculture, the expression is very less. So that's why so endothelial cells are very much important. In earlier studies, also people have so then in our study also we have seen that the endothelial cells are very much important for survival of this or function of this hepatocyte, hepatocyte cells. Then other things are like we have printed what we have done. Here we have printed the endothelial cells in these lines, and hepatocytes are printed everywhere. But the endothelial cells are print, being printed only at the line. So we now would like to check that whether the hepat endothelial cells that is printed on the line whether they are they can maintain the positions or not, or whether they are migrating towards the other areas. So by this W one W F uh, this thing antibody, we could see that the yes. The cells, they can maintain their position. They are not migrating towards the other area or in other way, they are creating some kind of mon monolayer. So that is what required for this creating of these channels. Then we move to 
a concept like can you develop a model so that can be used for drug testing so that's why we have come up with this boat kind of concept where this is a perfusion based model okay it has an inlet and outlet and in between what it have it has lines of this hepatocytic hepatocytes island and the channels in between the channels okay this the dimension is almost like this a 4 mm and here is the zoom magnified version of this thing like these are the hepatocytic island and this is the channel so the media can perfuse through these channels and the hepatocytes they can get nutrition from the sides and what will happen our hypothesis is like wherever the media is flowing through this thing due to the hepatocyte because hepatocytes are highly metabolically active cells okay so they will get the nutrient they will suck the oxygen from this blood from the media and the whenever the media is reaching to this stay here they, the, these cells will get less new or less oxygenated media okay so accordingly the genesis will develop that's that is a, that was a hypothesis and then we have checked with hif alpha 1 alpha that is the hypoxia uh, that is marker to check the hypoxia hypoxia induced factor 1 alpha so we, we can see that cells present present here and our hypothesis they, they will get oxygenated blood oxygenated media so here very less hif alpha is expressed so cells are healthy here they are not expressing hypoxia but here the cells are hypoxia because they are getting less oxygen so that's that's what like as, as we have seen we have seen the result that yes, the cells are very much possible. It is very much possible that the cells here they could develop a zone. So accordingly, the next or next hypothesis was whether cells that are present near the ox, near the inlet and near the outlet, whether they will definitely they will if they are getting different types of different concentration oxygen, they will express different types of proteins. And that is very true. We have seen from our histochemistry results that yes. The ecadrine that ecadrine is exp highly expressed where the cells are getting the cells are present in the near the inlet and uh, beta catenin that is present <clears throat> that is expressed in high quantity when the, the cells are that is cells that is present near the outlet because when the, they are getting less oxygenated medium and <clears throat> so this is this will go with the other literatures and also it is very much in our in our uh, tissue in our liver tissue so they expressed in, in a similar way the current concentration will be higher, expression will be higher. And so we could see from this thing, we could see that, yeah, the cells, the, means we could develop a genocide in an in, in vitro system just by perfusing, not by any other means. There, because there are very other studies where they have induced this genocide by other means, by modifying the cells to express different, to, to, or by, uh, modi by doing some manipulation, they have done this. But in our study, we have done just by simply perfusion, we could see that the cells, they can express different types of proteins. Now, what could be the applications of, and also like we are doing many such studies, other studies, I have not included those. Actually, the paper is also under communication now. We have also tested some of the drugs within this model and other things. So, the, but, but just to show you that by simply by doing bioprinting and this, this whole structure is also printed by selective laser, laser sorry, by stereolithography process. That is also another 3D printing technology. So this whole structure is printed. So, and now we have one another thing we are trying to do, we are also trying to reduce the dimension of this print, uh, the structure so that now we can see that with a lower dimension, the same thing can be repeated or not. So the application of this in vitro model is, it can be used for understanding of physiology, pathophysiology. Like this model can also be used as a hepato, hepato, uh, miss a hepatic disease model, just by introducing some disease cells or maybe by introducing some factors that can induce some some particular a particular disease something like if we introduce lipids lot of lipids to this disease whether they are going towards this tsosis or not so something like that so there are many possibilities to this so many of my students they are working on different things like they can be used for toxic level screening they can be used for the infection models and also as in vitro disease model and cancer models now the most important question probably many of you have have this question like when we then if all these are good like if we can print the whole tissue whole organ then when we will be able to get this bioprinted tissue or organs like when it can be used for used in clinics so one disclaimer is till now no bio bioprinted products those are there in the human trial like uh, because there are other things also there is some regulatory challenges also so that's why we have not got any bioprinted tissues or organs in the clinics. So mostly this, they are in research and many other things like many other many of the things are almost like they are reaching to the regulated for regulatory app. They are waiting for regulated approval. But this is a very realistic uh, realistic figure where any two dimensional organ that is very much possible in a short term. But 
hollow tubes like something like trachea esophagus these are possible also in mid term but solid organ like kidney trachea that is the uh, you need to we need to wait for quite long typically so very soon like in terms of very within uh, within a few years we will develop definitely get this kind of tissues and maybe in the next within a decade or so we will be getting this we will be definitely we can get this kind of tissues and many of the things are already like developed and maybe it can within a few years also that can be that can come out and but for to develop whole heart whole liver whole kidney definitely it is there are few promising examples if you search in the, if you search in the internet if you follow the trend then you will be seeing that definitely there is there are many such tissues or organs people many researchers they are try to print these things okay but to get to for apply on some human patient then we need to wait for quite long like it can take more than 10 years or so so acknowledgement i have uh, like uh, i was fortunate to get a few grants like from different funding agencies to support because this kind of research work it is very ex cost ex extensive and the facilities required those are also very costly and of course to sustain the process also is very challenging so and these are the, my students so they are all they means i uh, thank to them because they are all they are doing very hard work and due to them only we are able to print various such things we could progress and also like uh, for this kind of work we need to collaborate with many just many hospitals and other things and i have been actively doing that also like i, I have been working work with many international uh, research groups and thank you all so i just would like to uh, end with this definitely organ printing is a high possibility uh, this is a promising area still now we are not there but the future is not that far away definitely will reach one day there thank you very much for all or your patient listening and probably we have some time for question and answer yeah thank you so much professor party it was really a very informative talk like couple of months back i have seen uh, israeli scientists coming up yes. with the heart uh, a small miniature heart uh, and you know it was really fascinating and now you had the way you have explained it like a very complex topic was explained so easily that even a layman can understand what exactly the bioprinting is how it works i'm very sure it must be a uh, must be the same experience for all the participants and uh, listeners so